Hello, YouTubers. Okay, this is what I call the single pulse experiment. Okay, and all it is is a power source starting from negative. It's just all in a loop, a series loop. Let's see here. Okay, going back to the negative of the capacitor, coming out the positive of the capacitor, uh, follow it around, it goes through a diode, the negative side, and then out the positive side, and it goes through our switch, and then it goes through a coil back to the uh, positive of our source. So it's just it's just a loop uh, in series, and what this does is it creates one single pulse when we hit the switch, and so what happens is the capacitor will charge up to the voltage level of our power source. So this is 12.30 volts. This is going to charge up to 12.30 volts, okay, which is actually half of the energy. I'm going to explain that here in a minute, okay. But once this charges up, you know, current flows through everything, goes through the coil, forms a uh, magnetic field, and once this charges up, it's basically going to block all the DC current from our power source because it's full. It can no longer be charged, uh, so no more current is going to flow into it. So that cuts the current off from our magnetic field. Our magnetic field collapses, and it goes backwards through our switch diode, and it charges the capacitor up twice. So our capacitor gets two pulses for one single pulse. And what that does is it puts a higher voltage that's higher than the voltage source. And so I'm going to show you that right now. Um, so I should have had this sorted here, but I didn't. We want this capacitor, and of course I'm just measuring the voltage across the capacitor, negative and positive. Okay, and I got the capacitor shorted, so that's at zero, okay, and so we're going to start this by hitting the button, really very easy and simple, take the short off, okay, hit the button, okay, and this is what we get, look at that, 12 or 17.90 volts, but the thing about that is what I would really like to show you is uh where's my little where's my little sorter here right there is we know that we're losing half of the energy from our power source when we charge a capacitor so if there's 12.30 volts in here of course this is going to charge up the 12.30 volts and we know that's half of the energy that came from the battery So here, here let's let's light this up a little bit brighter here. Uh, too bright? No. So if we have, look at this. If we have 12.30 volts, okay, at 82 microfarads, okay, that's 6.203 millijoules of energy, okay. So let's go write 6.203 down. Uh, 6.203. Okay, make sure that's right. Uh, 6.203. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Okay, that's the energy that came from the battery, and we know that that's half of the energy. So let's save that. But in order to get 100% of the energy, then we would have to double that energy, right? Right, so if we multiply that by 2, hit our equal sign, we need to get this capacitor right here charged up to 12.40 joules. Okay, so we know that we charged it up to... 
what was it? 17.90. So if we go 17.90 at 82 microfarads right here. And we go over here. Now we have 12.99 millijoules. Okay, so if this is 100% of our energy, because we doubled it, and we copy that, and we go put 12.99, uh, 12.99 joules, right here, 12.99 millijoules, and we copy, oh, well, we divide that by our 100%, look at that, 1.047, multiply that by 100%, that's 105% that we stored in our capacitor from our power source. So, uh, chew on that for a little bit, and uh, just to show you one more time, uh, let's turn this off, and let's sort that out to zero, and to show you that's 12.30 volts right here, charging this up, what we do is we can just bypass uh, our diode, like this, and uh, turn our switch on, and you see, uh, I got it sorted, take the short off, there's the 12.30 volts. It's exactly the same as the voltage of our power source, which can be a battery as well. But we're just using this. <clears throat> Let me get a, a sip of coffee here real fast. So this is actually half of the energy stored. And so what we have to do is we've already seen what joules of energy that voltage is, so we had to double the, the joules of energy, uh, and the 17.90 volts is what does it, so turn it off, and then I'm going to short this out, right here, and now what we can do is uh, put this back across our diode, and we take our short off, it's at zero, Hit our switch and watch this 17.90 volts and this is just current leakage so we're, we're we're coming up with enough energy to actually overcome the uh, current leakage of the capacitor and all the losses in our resistance there's a two voltage drop right here across our diode that's a loss of energy the loss of energy through our switch, but not very much. It's a tiny resistance. Just some resistance in our coil and all our connecting wires. All these losses. And we actually came up with 105%. So, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Okay, here are two websites... Uh, references that I found that you can go download these links for yourself um, I, I'll have the links down below on where did half of the capacitor charging energy go and then the problem of the energy stored on a capacitor is a classic one because it has some counterintuitive elements and so forth well down here says so the bottom line is that you have to put out two joules from the battery to put one joule on the capacitor the other joule having been irretrievably lost to heat the second law of thermodynamics bites you again regardless of your charging rate the non-intuitive nature of this problem is the reason that okay so we're losing half of the energy from transferring it from the battery to the capacitor so what we're doing is when we have a load in between we're actually observing half of that energy as being done as work but we can't retrieve it we can save half of it and make the other half do work but we can't save that work and so the other file is right here the work done by the battery to charge the capacitor 
is equal to the potential energy stored in the capacitor. So this is very easy and simple to see. I've showed this in a previous video with a light bulb or any other load really that the work done by the battery to charge the capacitor can be seen and that's only 50% can be seen as 50% work done on lighting a light bulb or spinning a motor or resistor or whatever kind of load while the other half is saved in the capacitor which is equal uh, to the potential energy as potential energy is just the ability or the potential to do work so we're saving 50% potential to do work that we can save and retrieve for later to run the, our light bulb let's say with the other half of the energy so really we're just running our loads with 100% of our energy but we can only save or recycle half of it the other half we can do work on it but we can't get it back so if you're new to my channel please subscribe and thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video